All right. Ah, uh, crazy, crazy day. I probably should have filmed this earlier when I was more awake, but you know, just too many trades. Uh, congrats to so many of you. This is the hot market I was warning about years ago. Let me go back to a 2022 tweet that I said. This is why I like Twitter. You know, people ask, why do I, you know, link to Twitter so much? It's time stamped. Okay. That's the beauty of this. Not that I love the platform any more than anything else. It's just time stamped. Um, and I said this back in January, 2022, when it was really a bad year. Um, and the, the bad year, frankly, hadn't even begun yet, but I said, everyone wants the best plays right away. The sad reality is the vast majority of people haven't studied or prepared enough to truly capitalize on any solid play. Instead of desiring big trading profits right now, hope for a slow market that gives you more time to study, um, and study hard. And sadly, you know, this was two years ago, I would guesstimate and I said this, you know, less than 10% of traders are prepared to really capitalize right now. And it's sad, you know, um, I know it's in a hot market right now. Everyone wants to know too bad. Okay. You didn't take my advice when it was a slow market. You didn't put in the time you had two years, two years to get ready for this. And the vast majority of you didn't do it. Maybe you found me too late. Maybe you didn't take it seriously. Maybe you thought I was a scam, but you know, I, all I can do is teach. And in a hot market like this, it's really difficult to play catch up as many of you are learning. Um, still learn, you know, right now, like, you know, slow market, fast market, the sooner you begin learning, the sooner you can be prepared to actually earn and earn meaningfully. I can't get it through to you fast enough. Leave a comment below if this makes sense. Say, I will study now. And like I said, I wish that I could have reached more of you or that more of you would take it seriously years ago. But, you know, you can't go back in time. All you can do is take it day by day. And, you know, with so many plays every single day the past few weeks, you're starting to see what a hot market looks like. And it is overflowing with potential profits for those who are prepared. Um, I had a pretty good day, nearly 5K. Now closing in on 60 grand year to date, trading so safely. Um, you know, I need to be more aggressive myself. Um, I, I need to do better. Uh, YGMZ, I was aggressive and I got just smacked around. Fortunately, I, it wasn't worse because it just, you know, spiked and tanked so quickly. I'll go over that in a second. Um, you know, OCEA, um, some pretty good profits, but I, I still need to be more aggressive and it's, it's tough for me, you know, because I'm, I'm trying to, to teach. I'm trying to trade. Um, I'm not making excuses. I'm just telling you the way that it is. You look at what I've done. This is nowhere near best case scenario. Nowhere near. Okay. Uh, let me start with, I guess, R-E-A-L. Um, this was my over the weekend play. And this was just an earnings winner. Finished near the day high. Earnings winners have multiple days. That's it. Very simple thesis. Uh, got on a little dip off its highs on Friday. Pre-market, it was down a little bit. People were grumbling. I was like, just give the pattern time. Um, sure enough, it, it took out the day highs, uh, Friday's highs in the 280s. Um, you know, I was selling it in the, the 290s. I wasn't sure, um, you know, if it would really keep going. Um, what did I get? What was my exact price? Oh, like 287. Yeah, like I didn't even make it to 290, to tell you the truth. Um, I just, I just really wasn't sure, um, how far it could go. So like, that's one where, you know, nice little profit of nearly a thousand and it goes all the way to like 320. Um, not AI, not crypto, just an earnings winner. Earnings winners are hot right now. Um, so that's a good lesson for me. I will say you need the, the trend to be solidified before it's an earnings winner. A lot of people were saying EKSO, EKSO, Tim, it was spiking initially on earnings I don't know what they said on their conference call, but I don't care because it died very quickly. And this is very similar to YGMZ, which was spiking pre-market on Monday. Um, you know, they had this, this non-binding agreement, which again, most people will say, Tim is non-binding. They just say potential. Exactly. I want the worst. I want those over-aggressive short sellers. Um, you know, let's not forget HOLO, two to a, two to a hundred, all based on the fact that they joined some alliance. And then 
over-aggressive short sellers took it higher and higher over the next few days. Um, lately, these shorts have, have really come down. Um, you know, short sellers have come down on these stocks and these stock prices have come down too as a result. The short squeezes have been weaker the past few days. So that's something to recognize. YGMZ, I was trying to be aggressive. Um, I saw it, you know, the news came out, stocks of trade, breaking news alerted it in the 60s and 70s. I saw it, thought about buying it in the 80s, didn't do it, came down to the 70s. And then in like one minute, it went from 72 to like 95. And I was like, wow, like that's crazy. Amazing, fast upside. Let me try to get it on a dip. Um, and it just kept dipping and it didn't come back. The only thing you could do is cut your losses, which I did. OCEA, why did this short squeeze work so well? Because this isn't just a one and done. So it's like the one and done's, you know, there's different kinds of short squeezes where, you know, in the past, the stocks that fail on day one could also spike the most on day one. This is what's been working lately where OCEA has been spiking for like two weeks. Um, and, you know, this was a, a really nice, um, you know, pre-market spike, but it, it came all the way back down. And so I was watching it, but I was like, wow, it hit three pre-market early on and then you know, by the open, it's back in the twos, but then it came back up. And this is why you have to really, you know, just keep track of, uh, you know, pre-market highs and, and after hours highs. Um, this was early on, you know, 5 a.m. You can have an interactive broker's account and trade at 5 a.m. and have no life whatsoever. Um, but that's something to, to take note of because it went down from 310 all the way back down to the 220s. Like this is a big drop comes back to three, breaks out to 360, comes back down to three-ish and holds this support, okay? And this is what I'm looking at. I'm, I'm looking at these former spikes and I'm looking at this resistance, okay? And, and this does a really good job of coming down and then breaking out and then holding support and then breaking out and then holding support and then breaking out and then holding support and breaking out. Like there's a very clear trend here. So this might just be a short squeeze play, might be a piece of crap stock, but it follows a, a, a relatively clean trend. Um, and you can see here that, you know, this uptrend, it wasn't all at once. It's not too, um, you know, too, too parabolic. Um, it, it, it moves in waves. So my trades where I really did well, my first trade was midday. Again, I'm not just trading market open or market close. Midday is open for trading. Pre-market's open for trading. After hours is open for trading. Everything's open for trading when there's a good play. Um, and this was already on a dip. And a lot of people were like, Tim, don't trade midday. I was like, shut up. I'm going to do what I want. No offense to you guys. You can, you can trade however you want. But I have been preparing for this hot market for years. I've been doing this longer than most of my millionaire students have been alive. Um, not trying to be, you know, cocky. I'm just trying to help you understand I'm willing to do anything. Okay. I will try to find any solid potential profit wherever I see it at any time of day. That's what happens in a hot market. And this was one of my best trades. Um, get catching it on a dip midday. It's right in here. So it had already hit the 360s, 370s. I'm getting it on a dip. And this is, you know, I know stocks to trade breaking news plays can be fast. Pre-market can be fast. A lot of plays can be fast. If you want something to be really slowed down, let me just zoom in on, on what it did today. This is March 4th, 2024. If you're watching this video lesson later, you know, not, not perfect stock, very choppy. But again, you see here when it breaks the pre-market high from three, it goes straight to 360, 370 and comes down and then holds three. And I'm catching it. Which one was it? Like right here. So it had already basically used three-ish, 295-ish as support. I'm catching it here because it looks like it's kind of curling. It looks like it's coiling. And, you know, there's just not much risk buying a short squeeze stock near support when it's already proven that it can go multiple waves. Did I know it was going to go, you know, to the high fours? No, I didn't know that. My old thinking is it can retest the highs here in the 360s. And I didn't even know if it could break the 360s. But, you know, if I'm buying it here at 310 ish, and the high is like 370 to be exact, 60 cents of upside. And what's my risk? If the short squeeze fails, if something happens, whatever, I lose 10 cents a share. So there's literally six to one risk reward. I know some traders like to like 
do their R's like, oh, this is a three R trade. This was a five R trade. This is a six R trade. Okay. And I sold it too soon. I, again, need to get more aggressive. That's on me. Um, could have, would have, should have held longer, but you know, this is one of my biggest profits. <laughs> and this is a very simple trade. Just buying a short squeeze stock near support, it holding support and it keeps going. Um, and then I tried it again. Uh, you know, this one, it didn't get right back to support. And again, this is my thinking where like, I, I saw the uptrend in play, right? It didn't get back to three here. It got to like three tenths. So then when it comes down to, I think it was right here. Yeah. Basically double bottomed. Actually, you had two opportunities to buy it in the three thirties, uh, before it went to the four seventies. And this is something I need to be more aggressive on. I just wasn't sure it could necessarily break the three sixties again. And, you know, by this point, I'm like kind of tired. I flew back from Asia. So like jet lag is kicking in. Um, I did take a nap. So just in case you wonder um, how I do it, because, you know, Asia is 14 hours ahead. But I'm trying my best um, to just take advantage. And, you know, this was yet another profit. So OCA was my best trade of the day. Um, a few of them. And then uh, BBAI and GFAI, you know, just two AI plays right? Like these are just two AI plays that are in play. Um, I traded uh, BBAI near the open because it was just, you know, again, this was very similar to uh, AXTI when they reported earnings and it spiked so quickly. When I see a stock that, you know, on Friday, this wasn't the fastest mover. I thought that it might break out, but it, it really couldn't convincingly break this 410 level. Um, and, you know, today, it broke 410 and went straight to 480 in a few minutes. Very similar to how AXTI did that a few days ago when they had an earnings win. When a, a stock, a slow moving stock, all of a sudden proves itself, then I'm interested in it. Um, I didn't want to chase it. You know, again, got a really good uh, little dip by, um, you know, at first I got some at 450 because I didn't want to miss it, but then I added size in the 420s. Um, and this was a really good dip buy. Some of you might ask, like, when do you cut losses? When do you add? If a play is moving so fast, and I know that I chased it a little bit in the 450s, but I, you know, I thought that there was actually a chance that it could just go to five and I could take a quick 50 cents a share. Um, but, you know, guess what? Like, I got more on the dip because I see the range. I see the potential upside. Go back to my AXTI trade. Very similar price action. Very similar success. Um, and you know, again, I got a little too freaked out cause now I have like pretty big size. Like, you know, this is only like roughly $30,000, uh, position size, but I I'm used to trading with five or 10,000. Remember I start the year small every year. So this is a big position for me and I was just happy to take it. It was very volatile. Um, and I took it and, and that was a good little AI trade. And then I tried a late day AI trade. Um, and I wanted more for this AI though is, you know, you, you got to try to ride it, but at the same time, you have to recognize that it, it kind of sucks. Um, and GFAI is a good example because it did break out. Like this has been uh, one of these AI plays that hasn't really broken out. Uh, you had SOUN break out big, you had um, BBAI now break out. And this is kind of the last one that hasn't really broken out. And the whole question is, can it take out like these 380s? And in the morning, it got to the 380s and then failed. And then in the afternoon, it was trying. Um, and in the afternoon, there was already some big volume, some spiking into the, the 380 area. And I was like, let's see how far it can go. So I took it at 380. I, I said I wanted the fours. Um, but, you know, it, it did get to like 403, but it kind of stuffed at four-ish. And this was right around the time uh, when, you know, the granddaddy AI play NVIDIA started uh, you know, fading. And if the granddaddy, the leaders start fading, the little wannabes start fading too. Um, and this was, you know, Nvidia in the afternoon went from 875 down to like 850. Um, it came back a little bit after hours, but you know, into the close was very weak. SMCI is another big AI play. And this one, you know, really like tanked from like 1130 down to like 1050. So like nearly a hundred points a share. Um, and this one hasn't come back that much because it's just overextended. Um, and, you know, even BBAI, which I guess is now coming back a little after hours, you know, even on Friday, it, it, I mean, this was crazy where it dropped all the way 
from 411 down to 330 before coming back. Like there's just a lot of range. So if you ever feel like a, a play is getting toppy, just take it. Take it and run. Don't feel like you have to, you know, overstay. So on short squeeze plays, I probably should stay longer. On AI plays, I'm never going to stay longer because I've just learned the hard way from too many of them. So I know, like I said, this is complicated. We got AI plays. We got earnings winners. We got breaking news. We got short squeezes. There's a lot of patterns. And like I said, I would say 90 to 95% of you, no offense, you're just unprepared. There's too much moving. You don't understand one pattern, let alone like four patterns. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I couldn't reach you sooner. I'm sorry you didn't take this education sooner, seriously sooner. Um, it is what it is. It's a hot market. Try your best. If you're missing out and you feel like FOMO, fear of missing out, I said this, like it's it's still not useless, right? Like, you know, to anyone banking, you're not a genius. You're just in the right place at the right time. This is very important. A lot of people are like, I'm finally getting it. Like, it's all coming together. No, it's not. Okay. Maybe you're getting it because maybe you did study, but you're in the right place at the right time. Anybody who knows these patterns, anybody who has studied properly, like you should have, you're banking right now. It's not that you're so amazing. It's not that everything's clicking. It's a hot market and a rising tide lifts all boats. So very important for me, very important for you guys not to get cocky. But at the same time, um, you know, if you are missing out, if you're if you're not prepared, these things are moving too fast, you're just starting, I get it, right? It's still not wasted. A lot of people think like you either make money or lose money. If you make money, you're prepared. If you lose money, you're unprepared. That's not true. You need that sense of FOMO, fear of missing out. You need that sense of regret when you see a play for whatever reason you're unprepared. Maybe you don't have the right brokerage. Maybe you don't you know, have the right knowledge, but people think that it's a complete waste if you don't make money. That's untrue. There's actually a lot of usage in feeling like crap. There's a lot of, um, you know, utility going forward in your journey for you to remember this moment, for you to say, wow, Tim, you're doing well, but even you need to be more aggressive. I should be doing well, but for whatever reason, I'm not. Remember this moment. Don't forget it. Don't block it out. Some people say, like, don't have FOMO. FOMO's natural, okay? Don't have emotions. What? What are we going to do? 75 hard and wake up at 4 a.m. for the sunrise and make our beds every day and drink no alcohol and have no fun for the rest of our lives? Stop that, okay? We're all going to have FOMO. We're all human beings. It's fine. Utilize that FOMO. Recognize that there's opportunities galore right now. Recognize that whether or not you're capitalizing, this is working. Short squeezes are working. AI is working. Morning spikes are working. Stocks to trade breaking news plays are working. So if you're not capitalizing, myself included, I need to be more aggressive. I said it like seven times. Maybe you need to be more aggressive. Maybe you need to study the patterns more. Maybe you need stocks to trade breaking news. Whatever you have to do, do it. Because every single day there are big winners. Every single day you're unprepared is wasted opportunity. And like I said, I don't want you pretending like it's not happening. I don't want you to pretend like you don't have FOMO. Recognize that nasty feeling in your stomach where everyone is getting a piece of the pie and you might not be for whatever reason. And the good news is there's going to be more pieces to the pie being served from our friendly market. Every single day, there's a new pie. Short squeeze pies. We got breaking news pies. We got earnings winners pies. We got AI pies. In a perfect world, you're ready for all of the pies and you're tasting all the pies and you're getting fat like me and you're loving life in terms of carbs, in terms of travel, in terms of life experiences, in terms of financial freedom. There's so much opportunity right now and I just want you to capitalize. So I'll post links below to stock to trade breaking news, to the challenge, to learning about morning panics, to learning about the seven step framework. Memorize it all. Study like you've never studied before because the pies are giving every single day. And it's just who puts their hand out? Who wants the pies? Who wants their slice of pie? 
You tell me if you want pie. I know this video lesson has gotten crazy, but I'm really jet lagged. I need sleep. Get your pie tomorrow. We'll do it again. There'll be fresh baked pies for whoever's ready.